What's up, you guys, and welcome back to That Chick Angel TV in another installment of The Bald and the Beautiful. Y'all already know who's here. We got Kev on stage. We've got Mrs. Kev on stage, also known as Melissa Fredericks. We got my husband, Marcus Sangsley, also known as Marcus Saint on the Gram. And me, That Chick Angel, who possibly, by the time this airs, will have her 100,000. Woo! Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited. It's been 12 years coming. Lord, help me. It's always sad when I hear people be like, yeah, it started last year. Mm. We hit 100,000 in about three mm. months. I'm like, oh, I suck. But anyways, uh, real Blue quick. Only sometimes. Blue balls. <laughs> Blue balls. Uh, this uh, mukbang no. is full of Americana food from the stand. We've got burgers. We've got fries. We've got milkshakes. And we've got friends. And some... Um, <laughs> And some uh, flavored uh, sparkling wine. We have Wilson Creek's watermelon, which we're gonna open because Melissa's excited about it. Uh -huh. Let me open. And then we have peach bellini. Oh, ooh, likes ooh. that too. Mm -hmm. No, look I'm at you. Sure. You don't know which one you no. want. They're kind of. Okay. I feel torn in my spirit. Torn in your spirit. And we have Amar trying to chime Let in. Him out. Let him out. Let me get him. Let me get him. Release the crack. Really? This is why I don't like saying well. This ain't well. This is burned. Mm -hmm. Oh, they didn't, they didn't cook it too much. They're like, well, I'll show you. Okay. Don't, don't take it personally. Um, when you say... Uh, oh, well when, done. When you do medium well at a steakhouse, they'll take it personally and burn it. They're like, oh. They're like medium rare, medium. But anything else. Mm -mm. So, I think this episode, because there was a post that I was trying to make here recently on my Instagram, and I wasn't able to like word it well. But I was like, you know what? We could talk it about it on the mukbang. We'll talk about friendship. Yes, perfect timing, Kevin. Perfect timing. <laughs> friendship. Um, as you all, I think, are aware, me and Kevin have met each other professionally prior to the uh, pandemic. And then I got to meet Melissa also professionally. I had her on Mommy Confessions. And... Um, me and Marcus on one of our podcasts, we had talked about we didn't have many couple friends left. There were a lot of them going through divorce. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that we have for back home, they're back home. So it's like, you know, here, yeah, boy, it's still, it's not that easy. Um, so like for you guys, y'all been out here for eight years. What has that been like? Man, it has been eight years. Mm -hmm. What has that been like trying to make friends? And where has where do you feel like it has landed you as far as in how you all make friends, especially now that y'all are the Fredericks's, y'all are the on stages for <laughs> real, for real. <laughs> it's a little different. Like y'all, you know, some people might have knew who Kevin was when he first got out here, but like now, you know, y'all on a different level. Y'all did tours together. We did. Well, you want to go first? Mm -hmm. We ain't had no friends, really. <laughs> At first, um, it was just me listening to boys. Um, Mel and Greg, we spent a lot of time with. Uh, they moved here when? 2016? Mm -hmm. Mel? About three inches. Because Kim was B5 or mm -hmm. six. Kim's about B5 this year. Whatever, 2020. Was she born out here? Mm hmm. Oh. She was born here. Mel moved out here, started working at Netflix on my birthday five years ago. Oh, wow. So that's all y'all 2016. Had? So what were y'all doing? Yeah, 2016. Going to the movies. Um, we did hang out with Scotty and Dee. Mm -hmm. um, they were, Scotty used to play in a band at, at uh, Nick Jackson's room in Washington. Mm -hmm. So we used to go to uh, Taco Tuesday over their house and stuff, but they moved way out they move far they move like but the combination of them moving and us starting to go on tour mm -hmm. is really what um we stopped hanging talk with them mm -hmm. dang it mm -hmm. because we was gone so much we used to go taco tuesday when i used to work at all death before the tour mm -hmm. we should do taco tuesday maybe a month once a month for a while mm -hmm. uh it was great we used to have homemade shells and stuff but once we started touring and then they moved out far it was like it was hard. It's hard to go out to the IE on a weekday. The IE is hard to go out to any day, even for vacation. And it's, it's pre-pandemic, so the it was, IE. you know, traffic. It'd be two and a half hours. We had our IE show out there in Ontario. It was a 
different state. It's a different state. Uh-huh. You can literally go to San Diego from that time. So I we didn't really have Inland Empire. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. If you don't know, IE is Inland Empire. So yeah. Riverside. Yeah. I don't That's think all. it's worth mentioning ever. What? Inland Empire. I just I've never enjoyed mm-hmm. going there. <laughs> I'm like, why is this here? It's far. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so me, Melissa and I, for the most part, outside of that, we just used to go to the movies with the boys. So we didn't have no couple friends, right? Um, Before Scotty and D, we're outside Scotty and D. Yeah, I would try, yeah, I would say no. Uh, ADD is a lot of single young mm-hmm. men. Uh, Joshy times fifty people. No, yeah, not. and they were <laughs> they were a lot younger yes, Josh, um, right. than us, and they don't really have children, and so. So how was that for you? I was just about to say, girl, how deep you want this episode to go? Because if I'm being honest, it was lonely. Oh, wow. It's very, like, isolating Mm -hmm. to be uh, removed from your family, Mm -hmm. uh, not have friends here. There's no footprint here. Mm -hmm. And then I am one of those people that um, my nine to five friends are my nine to five friends. Uh Uh-huh. Like, (laughs) when I clock out... Don't text me. Don't. We're not friends like that. Ah, I am that weird person. All my coworkers are like, most of we're friends now because, like, obviously none of us work there because the place is closed down. Uh-huh. Uh, but before I would be like, don't find me on social media. I'll never tell you what I do. And, Hilarious. Like at this point, I know you from the hours of my office hours <laughs> from nine. <laughs> Two five. Nice, right. Nice. At eight fifty nine. If you actually passing me in the parking lot, I do not know who you are. Right. At five oh one and I plucked out. I do not know who you are. Um so yeah, it was very like every weekend was kind of I don't know, it was weird. Even when Kevin and I had this conversation once, he would try to invite me to like his his uh like work stuff and I was like, I don't know these people mm-hmm. and we're not kind of like in the same world, so to speak. You get, they're much younger, they've not married, they don't have kids. And so that's a different, I don't know, it's just a different dynamic to, like, connect with someone when you right. recognize, like, oh, girl, I'm tired, too, because, like, my son had a science fair project that I don't want to do, and somehow I was roped into doing it. Um, it's just a different connection. So, yeah, it was very, like, lonely and isolating. Wow. Uh, really up until um, my sister came out, I bet, you know, because that was, it's just also the nature of L.A. can breed um competition mm-hmm. and it can breed or is this a come up like we were just having this conversation yeah. like emailed us and i'm like if you email us to be on the show but you don't follow none of us but you tell me in the email you're a fan make that make sense something in the milk ain't clean <laughs> like it's something not, in the milk ain't clean yeah the yeah. math ain't mathing i mean you, if you ain't following me who are you following <laughs> right I mean, so I mean, silly. <laughs> <laughs> i'm me <laughs> I just don't understand it. And to make matters so, worse. Yeah, that was my answer. Um, in Washington, we have my brother, his wife, their whole family. Melissa's uh, middle sister, uh-huh. her kids, her family, plus high school friends, plus church friends. So we had a good amount of friends. Uh-huh. So it was a very stark contrast going from that uh, yeah. amount. Of, and also, L.A. is huge. Yeah. Like, my brother lived... Basically, Maybe. in the IE, he wasn't that far. No, no, I mean, but, uh, in oh, Washington. Washington. In Washington, yeah. yeah. Cause so, my brother lived here for about a year or so, but lived in the IE. And I was just like, bruh, kids got school in the morning. Right. But back in Washington, we lived less than 10 minutes away. Mm-hmm. Melissa's sister lives left less than 10 minutes away. So, we never had to worry about a babysitter. Babe, we ended up going to a lot of uh, parties at Chuck E. Cheese so many times we went to Chuck E. Cheese. I bet. Because all of us had about the same amount of money and Chuck E. Cheese was like, man, here, y'all. Did pizza. Y'all did all this right down the street from us. Huh? They did most of this, yeah, down the street. All right. what? When, when y'all were like a mile from us. Oh, uh, when you sent me the address to do the podcast, I was like, y'all live right, y'all live before the closest grocery store <laughs> yeah. that we always go to. Uh-huh. It was a bike ride. No, I had double checked the address walk. when you said it. I was like, maybe I just put some, my house in backwards. <laughs> wow. I was like, because, well, we didn't know. We didn't know nobody lived no. down here. We didn't know. Um, so, what do you feel like has changed? Do you still feel isolated? 
Um, not as much. Mm-hmm. But again, we were talking to um, we're working on this project. I don't know if I can say it yet, so I just won't say it. Yeah, just don't say it. That's okay. Fine. What project? No. no. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was telling the lady that specifically during the um, pandemic. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I think I had like low grade depression. Mm. I'm thoroughly convinced, and it was a feeling of like when I think back on it, it was a feeling of lonely. To be honest, Mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know how else to explain it. And it's so interesting because I was never alone. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh That's uh, her. Her has a song about that. What? What I feel alone even when we're alone. Mm -hmm. Wish you would just focus on me. Mm -hmm. Food is delicious. It's Huh? Food is delicious. I'm I'm happy. Food I'm is? also, yeah. Just in general? Well, it's, yes, it's but just I'm talking about the food that I just had. I'm nervous. Turkey, burger, egg, yeah, everything on it. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse. Hey, sis. There. For you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this ain't giving what it's supposed to oh, get. Peach will try. There's no of peaches. That's going to be a poster. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 what I'm supposed to get. It's good. It's all right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, you didn't like that one? No, I don't know what it is. I mean, it looks like it's not going to be the greatest thing if the, when something's that color. Can't really go wrong with, <laughs> can't really go wrong with peach bellini. That's how I feel. What do you think about it? You don't like Eat-eat. all the uh, bubbles? Yeah, I'm going to let it sit yeah, that, it's, it's like it's, it's like medicine. Yeah, I don't know what they did wrong. I'm going to let it sit. There were so many like opportunities to if go if left. The they... sparkling water it won't be as bad. It was so funny. I mentioned it on. Here's the thing. Sure? I was kidding. Josh does not exclusively oh, date older you. white are you saying, women. Are you doing a tour of this? You have to. Because it, it, it started the, over no, here. But, but I had the clarity that you added to the to the bonus. Oh yeah, I was like, he doesn't exclusively date older white women. He dates all white women of any age. <laughs> he doesn't exclusively. Uh, no, he is definitely not an ageist at all. No, I was just kidding with Josh. Uh, Josh dates whatever he wants to date, whenever he wants to date them. Specifically Chloe. Bailey. Specifically <laughs> Chloe Bailey. Because her butt was looking amazing. I was it like, wasn't just her booty. I was like, man. The whole, the whole thing was... A, God was, bless her. Did you add her? <laughs> add her? I mean, I, I mean at I this point, he's shooting from the parking lot. Well, I was thinking, literally... I almost added you in the comments. Have you ever chance. thrown a rock as a kid and accidentally hit something? Hey, throw that rock. <laughs> <laughs> he said Josh, if you end up dating Chloe Break Bailey right that now, that window. I, I, feel like, profile. I feel like the stage crew could make this happen because I the almost stage crew added you. Attention. That's all I'm saying. I believe they're already in the comments. Yeah, for, I almost added you, and I was like, Joshua may not appreciate it, so let me screenshot it instead. I'm telling when you're you. in the industry. Usually, people in the industry only date people in the industry. I truly, I wanted that job more so that I could introduce the two of you Man. together more than me actually like wanting One to act again. Yeah, I just that inside in. That's you totally, do. That's this totally is the lie. thing, Joshua. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Come on, I love it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to do it every time she <laughs> I don't know if you're ready for Chloe. I don't know either. Oh, oh. You seen that video that dude getting twerked to get to the Chloe? <laughs> she knocked him into the Chloe. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. Too much too soon. She is too much too soon. She's a lot, but I think Josh sometimes be playing. Hey, Josh this got some, Josh put got the gold chain back on, Josh. Gold chain, gold, gold chain, Josh. Josh. Champagne, Vinny, gold chain, Josh. The thing that I would be ready for would be everything that comes around. With oh that yeah, in that attention, you be Joshy Bailey. No, no, no. Oh, you're talking oh, about I'll on the internet. The last name so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that thing. I'm progressive. He said I Josh actually gonna get the tattoo filled in next week. That's funny. Okay, but you were saying you weren't alone, but you felt alone. Yeah, no, I definitely, there was definitely um, at the very beginning of the whole pandemic where I felt very uh, isolated and alone. Right, right. What? I was trying to say two minutes because Kevin asked and Oh, I thought it was two minutes left of recording. I'm sorry. No, two minutes no. to tell the first ad. the first ad. He said bye. Dear God. Oh my Marcus, go ahead and talk. Maybe that'll help you in this whole <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Two minutes. 
I didn't know Kevin asked that, my bad. Um, I don't see nobody but your side of your face. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Shut your mouth. Closed off. See, okay, no, but for real, you go ahead and talk. What has it been like uh, for you? Hell, I don't like people. Um, Let me tell you what's funny. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. When Marcus came to our house, when Omar was being the Republican, and he said, don't y'all dare think about moving to Atlanta. Melissa, what you like? Knitting? I'll learn to knit. Y'all, I said, Marcus. Keep your black Bonk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, nah, for real. Like that's that's the thing. Like I got I've made friends over the years from being out here. Um, but like first moving out here, it was same boat Melissa was in. It was Angels friends and Angels industry co-workers slash friends. That's all I knew. That's all I was around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I didn't have any when we first moved out here. I didn't have anyone outside of my profession that was my friends. I didn't. Hadn't no, met. you had people you went to school Oh, no, with. yeah. I had those that's in my profession. I did have a couple of sorors that were friends, like Lauren. But most everybody, I knew I them because like of I, my... I uh, knew Lauren until, like, after the apartment. Okay. That Thank was a year. Day. Like, well after the apartment, not, like, as okay. soon as we got the house. So, like, yeah, even your, like, friends. I knew of them. Like, she had, like, sorority sisters and everything that she'd kick it with. I knew of them, but I didn't really know any of them. Mm-hmm. So, it was, like, all angels people. Then I slowly cause started working out like crazy, so I met people at the gym. And, you know, I'd go out with them every now and then. But that wasn't even my dynamic because it was, like, a bunch of single dudes and me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh. Not really my thing. Not really your crowd? No. Especially uh, guys in L.A., they, it's like teenagers in grown men bodies. Mm-hmm. Literally, man. Like, I, <laughs> I've seen it. I'm just mm-hmm. like, y'all act like y'all have never been or seen women before. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. <laughs> but, uh, so it was, it was always that turn off because I'm just like kicking back and I ain't trying to hold the friend over while you try to get somebody else's. Nah. So anyway, uh, started actually it was still it was like a long time and I got really close with a lot of angel friends but same thing with Liz like when I first came out here it took me probably about six to seven years to stop hating California right really yes I could when I first moved out here I probably went home once a month oh wow really like people back home was like did you even move I'm like yeah I moved he thought California was so I hated like, it. It, it was like the simple it. stuff. Like I get my driver's license in Kentucky. When you go get your driver's license, you walk out of the building with a hot laminated driver's <laughs> license. <laughs> that, that day. Oh yes, yeah. that's how it used to be. But I, now, I came out here. Hey, like you it. wanted me to talk? I'm talking. Well, no, I actually uh, was trying to segue into an ad, but you don't even feel it. So let me I just don't. pause. <laughs> you said it. Up, you said it. Oh, you you gonna keep yes. going about that? I was like, it's so. Bonk. Which, when you need for a Bonk. situation, is good toilet paper. Is that right? That's what do you right. need, Angel? We, you need reels, and we can't wait to tell you more about it right now. You know what I hate running out of, Marcus? What's that? Toilet paper. That's awful. And it's so inconvenient. Yeah. Like, uh, as far as in, like, day-to-day life, that is one of the things that will irritate me the most is if when it's time for me to use the restroom and I look, and there ain't no paper, I'm going to blow a gasket. Mm-hmm. That is why I'm so excited about Real Paper sponsoring this episode. Um, one thing that we've also started to work on in our house, especially with our younger son being so passionate about it, is sustainability and really doing what's best for this planet. And Real rings about such ways that you're able to be more uh eco-friendly and more sustainable one it's a tree free toilet paper it's made of 100 percent bamboo bamboo and it's zero plastic meaning there is no plastic in the packaging at all even the tape they use is made of paper that's impressive now the best part of real paper is that they deliver it right to your door Oh my goodness, you could just tell them how often you want them to ship you toilet paper and so you will never run out again. Like, so you ain't got to buy, you know, bulk toilet paper in bulk where you're buying a hundred yeah, rolls. It's best to have a closet just for the toilet paper. <laughs> right, no, you don't need that. You can get the amount of toilet paper you need and then just have them ship more when, right before you run out. Every roll purchase helps fund access to clean toilets to those in need. And Reels is delivered with free shipping. Goodness gracious. 
This is so dope. It's getting better and better. <laughs> okay, so this is what we want you to do. Use our code, our coupon code, TBTB. TBTB. To receive 25% off your first order at realpaper.com. And that's spelled R-E-E-L-P-A-P-E-R.com. Again, use our promo code or coupon code, TBTB. TBTB. To receive 25% off your first order at realpaper.com. Thanks for sponsoring this episode. Now back to the show. Oh, okay. You're going to drink. <laughs> so for me, mm -hmm. it was a... <laughs> the carbonation. I Make know. it flat, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk uh, to him. <laughs> no, nah, uh, what was I saying? On my face. I don't know. You the one that uh, said that you want to keep talking. To it was the the I the friends. Hot yes. Hot you Thank you. It. Walk out of the dry, uh, the, the DMV, DMV. Mm -hmm. with a hot laminated uh, license, right? Get here, go to the go stand in line. Everybody's mad. People in the DMV right. got an attitude. Go get my license, right? Woo! Of course, they give you a little paper one. It's yep. gonna be in two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. Gotta wait. I'm like, all right. It comes in. They spelled my name wrong. Oh no! Guess what? Got to redo the process all over mm. again. As if it's From your that fault. point, I said this place can burn. Also, you you started off pissed off. Pissed off. Oh. And I on remember. top of that, it was the people. Oh my bad. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was well, it was you. the people. It's like, you know, in Kentucky, it don't matter what walk of life they are. You walk past, if you make eye contact with somebody, mm -hmm. you speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You walk in the store, you speak, you mm -hmm. hold the door open for people. Out here, I don't know if people thought I was trying to sell them something. <laughs> you know, women clutching their purses. Even for, when I see, especially older black people, I see black people, I speak. Yeah. They look at you like, well, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Greg, I'm like, talking about the same everybody thing, out here, I hate them. Hello. If you <laughs> everybody out here, I hate them. Hate you. Like you are still. I can't you stand are scum you. Come beneath my yes. Soul. You are the voided, horrible people that God don't like. Like, no, it's, no. like it, it's, it's that's just how it came off because of all right, it's really fast paced, which I adjusted to. But like the people alone, I'm like I can't stand it out here. And finally, I. I uh, saw this uh, one guy. He explained it to me. He was like, "Man, you got to understand. There's a lot of people." He said, I'm, "I think he was from." Uh, uh, Virginia. I don't know where he was from. Somewhere in Midwest South. And he uh, <laughs> Midwest South. <laughs> Midwest the South. It's like right there in that region. Right oh, that's there. only two places. Yeah. I heard, when, I, when you say I Virginia, to, that then is oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you uh, Virginia, Columbia. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you said a bunch of places. Go ahead. Anyway, he uh, he was just saying there is a lot of people. They are uh, they have to train themselves to not get scammed because everybody's want something. Everybody can you know has, can looking to take advantage of somebody. I'm like well, I ain't looking to take advantage of no goddamn bad. So then as soon as I you know switch over because I, I I ain't always been like this. As soon as I switch over, to <laughs> Marcus, all of a sudden now I fit in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. As soon as I start ignoring people, I start letting the door close on people behind me. <laughs> no, he's right. from around here. Yeah, he's from here. He, he said, let the door close on people. Yes, yes, that's what he does. Yeah, say. I don't do none of that stuff now. Uh, yeah, so now I fit in, but now it's uh, like getting, um, like, again, I'm not quick to make friends. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really, still really close with all my friends back home. Um, and, you know, a lot of my friends come out here and visit, but now it's like, We've met y'all. It's like I tell y'all all the time. Like I don't like people. When I have people that I like, <laughs> that, I, that I'm like consider a friend, I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. You are an actual friend. This ain't like I have pe friends that out here, angels, uh, friends, my friends. They like consider anybody that they're around. It's like, oh, we hang out with them. Oh, what's my friend? Is it your friend though? Mm -hmm. Is it your what's their last name? <laughs> yeah. You know anything about them? Yeah. Have you been around them more than once or twice? Is that really your friend? I don't just call people friends. Mm. Same with this. I don't hang out with people at work. I probably have one or two people that I, I would consider like a friend that I've made at work. They go do things after work. It's like, oh, we're going here. Y'all have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not going? you at night. Nah. Yes. <laughs> hey, we started a softball team. Cute. Cute. <laughs> we're going to play the other projects. Let me know how it goes tomorrow. <laughs> Let work. me know how it goes like, tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'm not the, I'm not, not in that environment. You know, it's things that we create. It would be a lot easier probably to make friends like doing things professionally. Mm -hmm. But the career that I'm in, yeah. That's, that's Do you work by yourself before the pandemic? I know you had your own office basically the whole year. But before that, was, was it? No, nah, it was in the office. Was mm -hmm. it like around people? Was around like, people. Oh yeah, yeah, around no, people. He's always yeah, been around yeah, people. Always it's been not around been people. isolated. Oh boy, 
It's not been isolated. Got it. What What about you? Because you have a different personality than these two. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was like, do, would I consider... Well, the distinction that you guys made is after work. And I don't think... I didn't really hang out with all deaf people after work that much. Mm-hmm. Like, I went to lunch. You know, there was a year there. I went to lunch with the same people every day. Mm-hmm. But outside of, like, company parties, there was a lot of stuff that all deaf people did with each other that I never went to. But you like, were I doing went, stand-up at night, though, too. Not out here. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. You ne- you weren't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't really even a part of the stand-up community like and that. And he was gone every weekend doing stand-up. Yeah. When we first moved here, because I had been doing four or five shows a week in... In Washington, and Melissa was like, I know you ain't gonna move to this new city Indeed. and have me out here in a weird place. And also, the LA stand up scene without some friends and ends and, and the time to hang around in the clubs, it's hard to break into, at least yeah. at that time. Uh-huh. So, I knew who Tony Baker was, but I mean, I wasn't my friend. You know, uh-huh. I didn't really get to know Tony well, well, till the tour, tour? really. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, he, at all dev, we chop it up, but like, I was friendly with a lot of people. But I wouldn't, I, until you basically come to my house, mm-hmm. I don't know. And I mean, like, there's a lot of people who, when we, we do the 90s party. Well, first like, of all, I've been killing your parties. Yeah. Yeah. You have. You have. I'm sorry. I, I listen, Josh knows. That just reminds me. I had the last year. No, I should have, could have, would No, no. Oh, oh, cut me a river. No, listen. You last oh, year. The I, and the cheese. <laughs> I, I'm not doing it. No, fine, then. You just keep winning. I'm not going to compete with you now. That's but last I year, I had the best year ever planned, and it was all ruined. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know that I had friend friends like that, that from work. Real work. Real? Okay. Yeah, okay. like I'm thinking of the early time at All Deaf, and I was like, nah, I don't know if I had like, there was a lot of people coming to my house and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I. I tend to get along with people quickly. Uh, Melissa had, I remember there was there was my birthday party in the 90s. The, well, not in the 90s. The 90s birthday party. Uh-huh. Karaoke. A, karaoke was so yeah, amazing. That door was ringing like, you remember the Ricky Lake show? And she would be talking and it would be like, ding dong, surprise, your baby mama's here. Right. That's how that once door it got was to the ringing. Point that, <laughs> once it got to the point that people didn't, I didn't know them at all. People were inviting people who mm. weren't. So I remember I was talking to a dude, I'll never forget this, he was sitting by the door, and this is in our old small house, and he was eating, and had a drink, and he was like, man, this party's lit, you know the dude whose birthday it is? I was like, nah, man, it seems nice, but he was like, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is too big. Yes. Uh, but I don't think, uh, I don't think I ever felt the same uh, loneliness as Melissa felt. Um, I've had friends come over to the house, I've had... All deaf, there was kind of what Melissa said. There's a lot of like Joshy uh, age people, but I went to lunch with the same group of people every day. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, we didn't, what we did not have that I especially like with Marcus and Angel is a married couple friends with small kids. Outside of Scotty and D, we didn't have a lot of people. No, I agree. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Scotty and D had a son that used to hang tough with Zay Zay. Um, and Joe, and they had a great time. And Joe and the boys have their own friends. Yeah. But like, y'all little kids, that reminds me of Washington, because my brother had, at one time, seven kids. We had two. Not at one time, he still has <laughs> two. Well, I mean, like, had seven kids with him at, at oh. the same house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the yeah, same yeah. house. Yeah, that's uh, true. For the majority of the time, he had, at minimum, two. Nick had two within three. Keita had two. So there was always at least five kids, mm-hmm. wherever we were. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just... All of our houses were around the same size, so it wasn't just all the way at our house. 1,200 square feet for it. Yeah. So there was a lot of... The sounds your kids make in there is what our house used to sound like. A lot of bumps in the night. Upstairs. Crying. <laughs> just a lot of random stuff. So uh, this now makes it feel more like back home in Washington. Uh-huh. And then the kids be over. McKinley be over. Riley be over. Uh, and, and the adults are downstairs listening to loud music. And the kids are upstairs sweating and being musty. I'd be like, yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. But you would say that, like, lonely isn't how you would describe it. It was just you didn't have the type of friends you had. I wouldn't say lonely, but I, what I will say is I had adapted, even prior to the Real Comedians Tour, I had adapted to having a certain amount of my time to myself mm-hmm. on the road. And the pandemic, the, the weird... Uh, 
adjustment was like, why do I want to be by myself when I never get to see my family? Why am I still like, I want to go to my office and watch TV and I don't want to be bothered. That was a weird, that was hard to reconcile uh, because I'm usually, mm -hmm. I had that on the road or by myself. Um, but then when I came home, it was like, okay, let me spend as much time with my family as, as possible because I'm going back out, you know, this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I wasn't going back out for the foreseeable future. And I was like, why do I still want to be in the room by myself? And at the same time, we moved into a new house and the boys had their own room for the first time with a bathroom inside of it. And they stopped coming out of their room. And that was just now it's four people in a house in four different rooms with three doors closed. Melissa d does, doesn't really, actually never really goes into a room and closes the door. Actually, I can't think of you ever doing that. Oh, okay. I was I was thinking about that when you, when you said that. Yeah. I was like, if we were to ever get to the situation to where all of them had their own room, I would not put a TV in their rooms. Really? Because you, yeah. that's their video games right there. Well, yeah. that's now the cell phone, too. My kids ain't turning the TV on in ages. Right. Unless they're casting the, the, the uh, cable, all their games and phones to a common area in the house. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what? Whenever we do get a new house, what I do want to get the kids. What? Magic spoon. I know it. I love this it. This is our next ad for this <laughs> Bald and the Beautiful podcast. We can't wait to tell you about it. Check it out. For anybody that knows me, they know that I will get home from work or a long day of doing whatever, and I will enjoy me a good bowl of cereal. Mm -hmm. However, now I can get home and enjoy me a good bowl of cereal, and it can be guilt-free. Good for you. It's a good, good bowl of cereal. Good, good, bowl good, of, good for you. Good for you. Delicious. Uh, scrumptious even oh, scrumptious and that is because of our sponsor magic, magic spoon. spoon all of us are very uh uh much so in love with this brand okay because mm. it allows us to live out our childhood with also recognizing that we are grown adults and there's some things that we do not need to be having extra yeah, of in our no, diet yeah don't nobody want child uh grown-up cereal you want kids cereal <laughs> And that's exactly what Magic Spoon tastes like. It's, it's delicious. But it's zero grams of sugar, only 13 to 14 grams of protein, or 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. In case you didn't hear it, zero grams of sugar. Zero grams of sugar. And you guys, it's only 140 calories a serving. It's also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, and GMO free. You ain't going to find that. Nowhere but Magic Spoon. I'm telling you, they are amazing. Yes. And they have some great flavors. They have cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Okay. And a lot of people, they like to mix the chocolate with the peanut butter because it gives them like a Reese's Pieces or Reese's Piece, like peanut butter cup type it of flavor. Does. It's delicious. <laughs> so we want you to give it a try. Be able to have the cereal that you and your kids will love and not have all that sugar and mm. get protein. Like getting protein out of cereal, where they do at it, Magic Spoon. So this is what we want you to do. Go to Magic Spoon dot com slash tbtb tbtb to grab a variety pack and try it today and be sure to use our promo code tbtb tbtb at checkout to save five dollars off your order and magic spoon is so confident in their product it's back with a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund you your money no questions asked remember get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash tbtb tbtb and use the code tbtb tbtb to save five dollars off and we thank magic spoon for sponsoring this episode all right, back to the show. So for you, it was hating the place mm -hmm. that started you out. For and for you, it was the the loneliness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know what was going on because I wasn't really too <laughs> interesting. Right. Kev is like I never felt. I probably would have felt lonely, but I'm such an introvert anyway. So I'm used to kind of withdrawing back unless I want to be somewhere. Mm. And then I'm like, all right, let me go get around with people. Yeah. But out here, it's just like, I had the choice to be around people. Mm -hmm. So it feel fine. When the pandemic hit, 
I lost that option, and then I started missing people. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I need yeah. to be around some people. I want the option to say no. Yeah, I don't have that option yeah. no more, and I took it's, it away. No, just been decided for <laughs> yeah. you for months and months and months on end. You know, for me moving out here, tell us because I was the first one of you four to move out here. I moved out here by myself. No, I moved out here by myself in two thousand. Uh, when did you come? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you be, a I month didn't get my dog on lie together because oh, I was trying to do the math of uh, 17, 17 years. years. I was like, is that 2005, 3, I got seven? out here. I, 89 is when I came out here by myself. Me and Steven here. Spielberg was down at the comedy store. He said, DreamWorks, you have them, I work them. I work them. I work them. Dreaming. Um, I moved out here in 2003, mm. but I went so to... Uh, yeah. I was going to grad school, so that kind of helped already with me developing some sort of connection to people because it was like a conservatory program, so we were with each other all day long. What does a conservatory program mean? It's very concentrated in the field that you are going into. So instead of being focused on the liberal arts that oh, you are... Oh, got it. Like, it was fine arts. Every Hyper-focused? Day. Yes. No lectures, nothing like that? No. I mean, it's a master's, so you usually don't have have it, but that's the best way to describe it is, like, if you went to a conservatory for music, you're going to be so studying So all the music. 10 people was in a lot of your classes, too? It was eight of us, because mm-hmm. you operate yeah. as a class. Oh, that's how my, uh, at UW, the MFA program. Yeah. There was, like, eight or nine of them, and they were the teachers. They were in all the plays. They switched off being lead in background. Yes, exactly. Music. It was like These that. people used to do. You so stupid. You so Blew stupid. My mind. The what they used to do? The stuff that they used to and do. And we were weird theater people. So, yes, they had us doing oh. weird theater people mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, the weirdest. God. Theater people. Bennett, Nerds. Bennett and uh, Amelia, Amelia. Amelia oh, came what off of this program. Oh, yeah. That's how it was. They it created too. the program. Y'all don't even know. They would be rolling their own tobacco cigarettes. Like, why? <laughs> that I sounds about so right. Why? Why, though? That just that's showed up in my memories, by the way. Did it? Mm-hmm. I thought that was the weirdest thing. Like, yeah, man, because you know, we get connected with the earth. <laughs> that's, that's if you were smoking, yeah. a, you smoking a cigarette, I'd rather it be rolled. I'd rather see you roll it than just pull it out the pack. Because <laughs> you're old. Yeah, I'm old. You love old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old. Said, yeah. When we first met you, she said, Marcus, love old timey stuff. He do. He's like old. He's man. into it. Um, Listen to my But playlist. the theater people aren't my people. Even though I am a theater person, mm. they aren't my people. A lot of them don't have similar life experiences. So I only had, well, I, got, I definitely say I had genuine friendships with all of them. There was only one theater person there that had sim- similar experiences to me, and that was Wendell. Mm-hmm. So he was the friend that, like, I stayed very close to graduating out of. He was in your class? He was the year ahead of me. Oh, okay, got it. Um, graduating out of, and so me and him, his friendship was close then, but it became closer once we came up to L.A. because we were both navigating it. Like, he's the one who helped me pick out the terrible apartment that me and Marcus lived in. We <laughs> Neither one of us noticed there was only one drawer in the kitchen. The entire kitchen. One, <laughs> one drawer. drawer. When we got ready so wait, when Marcus got here, you already had the apartment? Yes. So yeah, Marcus noticed it in me. 0.7 seconds. Yeah, no, she was calling me. It was like, all right, I'm going apartment hunting and looking for this, this, and that. She would like, take pictures and just let me know about the place. She was like, yeah, I found one. Me and Wendy, we went and looked at it. Because it was a price range because he was I knew he was gonna be culture shock. Oh, he wait, had a house for we're not gonna go through the whole story. No, no, we wanna know the whole story. We we developing our friendship. I need to know the whole thing. What color socks did you have on when they started me <laughs> White. They were white. <laughs> Nothing better than a clean pair of white hands. White uh, white hands. No, so I was renting a renting a house down the street from my parents, which parents live in a very nice neighborhood. The lady, luckily, my dad. That's that's Mm -hmm. his experience. They parents made bad decisions, and (laughs) they. That's true. That's a hundred percent true. You don't gotta say it. Hey, yours too. Listen, uh, (laughs) yeah, they say the swamp ain't no swindle. No, my uh, parents knew the lady. This lady, she was going uh, to work in Washington for like a year, year and a half, and she. DC State. DC, Mm -hmm. and she um, was looking for somebody to rent a house. And she couldn't find anybody mm. that she trusted. So then my uh, my dad told her, like, hey, my son's looking for a place or whatever. She, and she was like, okay, I'll get, just get him to house it. Because first she gave me a price, and I'm like, I can't afford it. Yeah. She was like, 
what was you gonna get your apartment for? Because I'd already gotten approved for an apartment. She was like, "That's what I charge you. You just take care of my house." What? Wow. On the come up. Oh, this right? this helped to it make you a, hate LA. Yeah. No. Yeah. You still it was thinking in about that? I came in. I said, "Oh, you got some water damage. I fixed that for." <laughs> I was having parties. <laughs> Daddy was like, "Don't be having no parties. Ain't got nothing to do with you." I got a contract with her. <laughs> three bedroom, three bath, two car garage. The, just no him backyard it neighbor. It was you a was farm. Like he was living, living. Yeah. It was a farm behind me. Horses oh, would come up. To the fence. Really? Huh? What'd you say? Oh no, I thought you said the price. That's why I was like, um, Oh no, the, when you hear the price, you'll die. I, yeah, I Apartment was, out here that we would get, we got was twelve hundred. It was twelve hundred right. for our two month. bedroom, two bath with a loft okay. and roaches. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody, everybody that lived out here Roaches came to come our standard oh, issue in LA, by the way. Standard issue. Roaches. Uh, everybody that came to their apartment that was so impressed that lived out here. Oh my God! I'm like, this is filthy. <laughs> I was, was renting that house for four ninety five a month. Oh, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> the Dad fact was. that you moved here, you loved Angel. Oh yeah, he did. Cause you came for almost just, three times. Yeah. Yeah. Kev, two and a third. I resent Ooh. Angel. <laughs> no, don't. I wake up in the morning, I open my eyes, and I just smirk. <laughs> No, he don't, because he's sitting here doing this. This is like, <laughs> he know the come up was the come up. Yeah, no, that was no. hard. I bet that was hard to let go. Young and dumb. By the way, I never, we never, I think my first apartment was 585. Yep. Melissa and I's first uh, apartment that we like moved into together mm. was Six, 650. So I was going to say 625. Between 625 and 650. And you was living in that, and that dog apartment was. That big. <laughs> big as you as open the door, the whole thing, you've it seen it. The back bathroom, yeah. bedroom, living room, kitchen. That apartment kitchen. is as big as this. Okay, so Actually, this see. might be bigger than our apartment. It's about this. I'm it's talking probably about. Like, probably like 25, 2600 square feet. Oh. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, our our apartment was like, like, I would have threw that dream out the window <laughs> and said, hey, this is it. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I tell you, our first apartment was, it had two doors in it. One you go out, <laughs> bathroom, we thought, oh, you got a master entry. Yeah. <laughs> 612 feet. Yes. Josh. That thing and Marcus like had a home. 500 square feet. He had a home. What a garage. A garage. My whole apartment probably been as your garage. Had a, had a, the upstairs was like open, so the hallway was like the. Uh, yeah, you could look over into the over. down, down into the living room. The downstairs was How long did you get to live there? Yeah, it, was a, it was over a year. It was a year. Was it over oh, that was year? good. It didn't feel like it was over a year. I know it didn't to you, babe. <laughs> I had Angel all over that house. <laughs> 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 Everywhere. The way you said Everywhere. it, I heard that she wasn't hey. just visiting. Hey. <laughs> The deck. the deck was the only place because yeah. you could see my parents' house from the deck. <laughs> <laughs> this is in uh, uh, what city? Lexington. Lexington. Uh-huh. Yeah. Man, you don't have to, when that, you come into town, we'll have to show you when we yeah. go on the tour. Come we got a show in June in Lexington. Yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, my, Melissa's dad house, I bet, is much like yours. I mean, just land. Yeah. His house just goes into the back, and then it's just wood. It just keeps going. <laughs> just, I mean, you could go get, there's a creek back there. Yeah. All types of stuff. Does nobody know what a creek? I People don't know nothing about like, no creeks. What? What? Oh, what? Why are you saying it like that? I'm like, that's what it is, a creek. I used to play in the creek all the time. All right, we'll see y'all later. Time. All right, I'll see y'all in a bit. All right. <laughs> The delay is funny. The delay is funny. Your draws is showing, right. you dummy. That would be my butt. <laughs> my draws don't help no. at all. The my draws, draws like it's warm down here. My and draws take I it bought down. the draws y'all told me are made specifically they for plumbers. Yeah. Class. My my Did butt was work? like, no, they tried to work for a little bit, and then my butt was like, oh, this. But there's a. Uh, <laughs> There's a specific brand that y'all in the comments was recommending. It did not work. Butts R Us? My butts undefeated. Yes, that was they the work better though, but my draws will sink down. I got it no don't work I got better. No you have a it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. I I know for for me, it was a Amar. Can I finish the episode? You want a nurse? He's such a swole brat. Oh my gosh, hold on. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I know for me, so sweepy. it was, uh, what was difficult was finding people at the same place that I was in life. Mm. So coming out here as a, like when I was in grad school, it was fine. I wasn't engaged. But then after I graduated, I was engaged. Right. I was um, getting married. And, you know, you got to be like 40 years old to do that out here. Right. Right, right, so right. it became a thing of like trying to find, while I had great friends or friends that I liked, 
they were just in a different place in life. Like even when we went to buy our first house, people still had roommates, which there's nothing wrong with that, but right. we just in different, I got different problems, different conversations are happening. 100%. Um, so 100%. only a few people was I able to keep a close connection to that didn't have similar things going on in life. But I'm the type that I will hunt down black people. I'll do whatever I have to. The reason why y'all say Angel knows so many people because I was looking for them. Mm. Mm. That mocha mom? I, mocha moms. I was like, where are y'all? Where are the black mamas with kids? Because I had little Marcus and I was like, I don't want him to be a weirdo and all he know is me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, that just, it didn't sit well. He had a bunch we of... Went to, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. We went to uh, a church and there was 8,000 people, 800 people in there. And there was nine kids in children's church. And we were like, nope. What? That must have been one church. Girl, uh, how you I was, know? I was trying not to say No, that. no, I talk about them all the time. I call them onesie because the people in there are young. That's so true. They still got It is a milk. church of young people. That's where I was going. Literally what? in what? life right in. and yeah. literally in their walk in Christ. I was like, oh, my. Like, movie theaters? Listen, yes. when, the, when the young lady came up in there with her booty shorts and thigh high boots on, and they were crump praise dancing at the altar during praise and worship. Mm. I That's said, the spirit. I said, this is not where we belong. I saw yeah. Diddy there. We saw uh, Diddy Tina there. Knowles there. Diddy Tina was probably looking for his next Common girlfriend. was there. Stop. Stop <laughs> Common, Common was there the Common day he there. won an Oscar. Yes. yes. He went from church to the Oscar. Sure not, Tank sang praise and worship behind me and Melissa. <laughs> I remember you said that. That's that a good joke. Myself. That's a good joke. I yeah. need to write that down. Um, I just, oh, I could feel the spirit of des- desperate for a man in there. And I said, somebody going to get confused and think my husband is their man and I'm going to have to kill him. Mm-hmm. So that was the last time we, we visited. <laughs> last time. I said, oh, no. I love them, though. Oh, no. Uh, no they, uh, this is prior to his um, current marriage. But uh, he still seemed. This is actually prior to their current location that we went. This oh, y'all went when it was over in uh, North Hollywood. That's yeah. when you was there, kid. That's when me and Zezé was going there for uh, when he was shooting Little Rascals. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's where we. Uh, that was also hard trying to find a church home. Oh. You, especially oh my, God. M- my lifelong friends I know from church. Mm. All of our friends in Washington that we hung out with on a on a consistent basis went to church. All yeah. of them. went to our church. Yes, we all. In high school, we or was I in high school or college? That what you've been saying? That when I joined, no high, high school, school. We all joined this church in high school. Yeah, mm. and we was doggone 28, 29. That's I mean we Kita, our homegirl who came to the house. Uh-huh. That's our friend from high school. She uh, went to the same track school. together. Wow, ran okay. track together on the doggone same relay team. Her mm. and Melissa's uh, next sister down. Went to the same college Passing together. the baton, one to each other. Mm. Zay Zay's basketball team, we actually the played basketball. One? Her kids, Nick kids, Good. Kita's kids, Jason kids. Our Great. kids of our friends group made up seven of the 10 or 11 basketball teams. Yeah. Wow. And me and Jason were the coaches. Yeah. So it was real. And we used to run these little kids out. The <laughs> I'm talking about we were the black team yes. in Washington. They were like, how y'all know each other? Don't worry about that. Everybody getting blown out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was, seriously though, no thanks to our kids. Literally, because it, it was like Kita's sister and her kids. Oh, That's yeah. like how we did it. So, and the thing is, when we moved here, it was such a dramatic change. Yeah. yeah. And not having the friends and not having a church we were comfortable with because we didn't go to one church right away, and then we were going to a lot of different churches. And then we also, That's I can't hold you, man. Right we didn't really realize how big LA was. Yeah. When we visited LA, like for vacation, we were pretty much always in the Hollywood area. Mm-hmm. Um, we never stayed in Hollywood. We just came and did all the stuff in Hollywood. Right. When we moved here, we stayed in the valley, got a house in the valley. But then we were like, oh, let's go to church. And we went to like uh, Noel Jones City Church. City of Refuge, so did City we. Refuge. Man, that thing was coming home. It was like two hours. It was long forever time. and a day. It was just so it long. It was so... F- Once I passed the airport and I still got and 30, 40 minutes to go. Yeah. Because the airport is as far as you should go. Yes. That's yes. where you should... Absolutely. It's I far. said the Holy Ghost that got on the flight and left here. Man. By the time he said Nobody I- preaches good enough to for me to hit you mm-hmm. for the two-hour drive nah, home. Nah, nah. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was huge for us. We were just like, because that was the other place where I fe- figured, oh, I'll be able to find yeah. like-minded Friends. people, people who understand what I believe with marriage, yada, yada, yada. 
And a guy was like, nah, nah. you're not going to find that either. You know what else is weird, too? I didn't. This is the first church Melissa had picked on her own. Mm-hmm. I came to her church on her own. I was low-key like, I, I appreciate my parents for having to deal with all this crap. Mm. Finding a church is the most stressful thing. And we were super active in our home church. Mm. So we weren't just going to go to any old church and sitting there. We went to Dog on Shepherd on the no, Hill. No, 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 no. I was looking for a mega church when we moved here. I had so much church hurt mm. that you I wanted, was like, you wanted something. I wanted to be a sheep. I didn't want to be accounted for. Don't know my you name. Wanted, we snuck right in. Saying cheers. No, Don't no. know who I am. My it's name. Nothing. Walking and walk out without talking to anybody. Shepherd, Shepherd on the hill. The pastor ain't even there for the last service. It's bright. He's on the, it's so white. He drops down. You're like, He's on the like, drop down. It's... Which we thought y'all don't love the Lord. Yeah. This man ain't even here. He's down to another church. That's exactly what I'm tell him, Melissa, tell him about some other bright stuff. But the bright. You know what else is really bright? Your smile. So, Marcus, do you grind your teeth at night? When I'm stressed, I do. I do too. Not even at night. I'll during the day, but yeah. During the day, you grind them. And at night. Well, you know what? There are so many other people that do this. Uh, there's about 40 million other Americans who grind their teeth, whether due to stress, anxiety, or an abnormal bite. Chronic teeth grinding will lead to worn enamel, tooth decay, sleeplessness, and expensive dental procedures. That's why we are so excited that this episode of The Bald and the Beautiful is sponsored by Smile Brilliant. Now, the way most dentists recommend to fix a, your grinding is for you to get custom-made trays, mm-hmm. right? Um, and y'all have seen them before, but I'm not sure if you knew this. They cost like two hundred to three hundred dollars per tray, and then by the end of the year, you more than likely have to get new ones because you grind through those. It's not like they're made of cement and that mm. you can't grind through so them. Like you flatten those out too. Eating through them, right? Well, Smile Brilliant has a way that you can help um, deal with grinding your teeth for a fraction of that cost. Using Smile Brilliant's Lab Direct process, you get the same custom fitted night guards for as little as. $45 per guard. That's, that's a huge oh, difference, right? Yeah, that's cheap. Also, they offer Smile Brilliant, um, excuse me, also they offer custom fitted whitening trays and a Carry Pro electric toothbrush. So there's other items that you're able to get. So this is what we want you to do. We want you to head over to www.smilebrilliant.com and use the code BEAUTIFUL, beautiful. at checkout for 30% off. Once again, that's www.smilebrilliant.com and use beautiful, beautiful at checkout. Back to the episode. She poured mine in this and then drank it. Oh, because it's amazing. It was delicious. I'm sorry. I should have just Bellini, gotten both Bellinis. I love, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with a peach Bellini. Peach Bellini. It's classic. Yes. So it's so brunch. It's so it's I'm so at home. It's just coming When the over. world opens up, we need to do a Rock Nation style brunch. This was our idea prior yeah. to the pandemic. We were going to do a Rock Nation brunch for digital people, and we were planning it. And I have like, the aesthetic. Hey, I, I just need Brie to execute it. Oh, and that's me. The digital brunch, I believe, will be so dope. No, it's no, basically no, the can't, NAACP can't be, image be. award for social media no, no, personality. I'm for digital people, oh, not for. Say, Kevin, this is not no, no, I'm not going to have you drinking a dog on Moscato at your computer. No, people are doing it. That's no, no, I'm no, no. Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm saying for digital people. Like, but what digital people? They've been what? Huh? They were whack? No, I'm just saying, no, which digital people? Oh, we can curate the list. Y'all can curate well, the what? list. I just want to do the aesthetic. It's not that it's, it's not about You just it, think though. you're better than influencers because you're a trained actress. Hey, like Actually, we need to under, do they pay to get in? No, it's, it's exclusive. In <laughs> I hate you. Okay, great, because it gets very expensive very quickly. Yeah, okay, there'll be like 10 people. Wait, on that invite only, is it a plus one? So that's okay, simply so with the plus one, you get to 20. I think it yes. depends on who you are. Like, for instance, when Tyler Perry opened up his studios, certain people got plus ones. Certain people, oh. you only come by yourself. Do not even call here asking about can that's, I bring. That's probably how they do it. In fact, this is the customer service phone number if you want to say it. <laughs> that's, right. that's how you do it. Yeah. 1 800, you can revoke your invitation. How about, okay, you want to bring somebody else? You don't come. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you have. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so you could do it like that. But yeah, it's been, uh, it's definitely been a road, and I feel like my friends has, have transitioned. Just right. the, hmm? Transitioned their, their life? No, not transitioned <laughs> on to the Lord. Oh, okay. 
Because I was like, what a bad No, I was like, oh my God. What, what? what did it transition to? Why did that thought not <laughs> even cross I my know. mind? It didn't? No. Well, she had did a little. She said, you're my friend, don't transition. And she looked down. I said, what did the harm? No, 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 no. You need no. to keep the home in the brain. All but one so is still alive. Like they, uh, the rest of them are still here. Uh, no, you mean, mean out of the industry? No, out of my life. Hello? Oh, out girl, of that I position. I mean, like, we're still... Like cordial is just, I feel like I there have been seasons for some, and then, but no, like hard feelings is just, oh, we don't kick it like that anymore. We that's don't real. even talk no, anymore. No, that's true. I think life circumstances often dictate friendships in a season. Yeah. One thing that has been hard, um, specifically in LA, is that the friendships that you establish like when you're in Kentucky and like these are the people you went to school with or you went to church with since you were a teenager though they stand the test of transitions of course some of those people can die off but at least for me at the time that I left they had they had sustained they had weathered mm -hmm. those transitions and out here you'd be like dang now you done messed up or you done moved or no. you done whatever yeah. and so then it just kind of re I don't know those feelings start to come up again because you're like, dang, I'm out of friends again because <laughs> like I'm in a new phase of life or maybe they're in a new phase of right. life, you know, what, no. whatever. Exactly. That's why that doc, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. That uh, season of Insecure was like, Bonk. this is my life? It really happened. Why y'all did this? I mean, what happened before, go ahead, babe. Well, I was just going to say with them, it was kind of like hard feelings, yes. but it sometimes it's really no hard feelings. No hard it's feelings. just, it's just changing. Um, what happened back home prior to this, there were the, well, let me back up. The military often does that for you. Yes. Best friend. Your dad got orders. What? And this is how often a lot of I mean, this was prior to social media. So these people was just gone. Uh, then high school friends, when you go to college, they ain't your friends no more. Same thing happened in college. They ain't your friends no more. And then we went home to college. We kept all our high school friends from church, but there was no, like, all those other friendships dissipating were based off of events. Mm -hmm. It wasn't ever based off of life changing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was just part of growing up that I didn't anticipate. Mm -hmm. You didn't anticipate. And that's just made more difficult by being in the public eye. I was about it's to not ask actually how much more difficult oh, do you feel like it is now. So much more difficult because most people go through those changes, they are just not in public. So you're like, oh man, you you know, you know your free girl, you know, we don't rock with them, we don't, you know, they change whatever. But when you're in the public eye, it's like, ooh, that becomes news. Be, and yeah. that's a hard thing to get adjusted to. Because right. you're just like, that ain't that ain't news. That's happened before in my life. Right. Now you the people making YouTube videos about it, that's weird. Yeah, I that's not, use... what, what are you talking about? Yeah, what? I was I was really struggling with my platform pretty much all of last year. At least from the pandemic beginning of the pandemic till about when I got the Maserati. Mm -hmm. That six month period that was, was big leap. that was big leap plus therapy plus being like in no uncertain terms, F it. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. People gonna feel how they feel. But I was fighting that was when I got dragged. Uh on all of that happened in the same six months. And I was just like, this sucks. Yeah. Boeing wasn't that bad. <laughs> I mean that, that, they got bruh. We got a bo we got a little bonus, three thirty five hundred dollars around Caribbean. We both got that bonus. Boeing was bad for me though. <laughs> Do you, oh, it was bad for you? I've never I heard you it. say that. I hate I don't it. Think I've never heard that. Ever that story. Yeah. Uh I won't go into it a lot, but I will say that last year one of the girls that I worked with were friends on Facebook. And it was during, of course, the whole civil rights movement of 2020. <laughs> and one of the girls randomly I'm trying to remember if she responded to something or she just randomly like wrote on my wall on Facebook and was like, I just want you to know that the that I apologize for not speaking up on behalf of you for the microaggressions and discrimination that you experienced at Boeing. Mm. And what's so funny is that I never attributed it to racism. Mm. I always, or like microaggression. I always just thought of it as um, just catty behavior because uh. I worked with a bunch of women. Um, and so I was just like, oh, they're just catty, mean girl energy. And I couldn't figure it out because it like came in that way. And I've never had a bad working relationship with anyone ever. Every job I've ever had, I have walked, before come in before and since. I've come in and been a stellar employee, never had a bad experience. That 
particular experience was so bad for me. And when she said it, I literally had tears in my eye. Number one, because it was like um, affirmation that my feelings were real. Mm -hmm. You know, that I had a reason to feel how I was feeling. And then that she put a name to it. Mm -hmm. Like all this time, I'm like, I don't know what I did to those girls, but they like just didn't like me. They They just didn't like me. It, probably, but it was just a lot of like microaggression, and again, that wasn't even like a popular like popularized word at the time. You know, it's kind of a buzzword now, but it was it didn't cross my mind, and so for her to have said it, it just you know, it just brought a lot of um, confirmation to those feelings. So yeah, it was a horrible experience. I said it was not my jam. Ten out of ten would not recommend. I, Zero out of ten. Would I not wouldn't recommend. have made it much longer in that department or I would have quit Boeing completely when we left. When that we white left. manager was trying to fire me. Who? Kitty. At uh, Boeing? Mm-hmm. That type of name she definitely was. <laughs> she felt bamboozled because a black lady was championing for me. She got me in the interview and then they both were blown away and and I held it together until Zay Zay booked Little Rascals and she was like, why do you keep wanting to go to LA? I was like, girl, mm-hmm. what? I don't want to be I, here. At Key Bank, I learned, don't tell nobody about that dream stuff because sure nice. I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice but once they booked that movie I was like Ooh. Oh I was just on my ex-manager's uh, Facebook by the way who? from Boeing with the, with the I did like black literally, literally two days ago Yeah, she's married to a black guy I bet she is she I can't like wait this. I can't wait we ain't going to have time to talk about it this episode but I do want to know um, how much harder it is to make friends now that you all are in the public eye. Because we don't I make know new you. friends. No, we don't say that. Either. Y'all let us become friends. That's it. Y'all, when y'all came in, Willy Wonka closed the door. Yeah, I would say y'all are the last of the Mohicans. I feel like the people done snuck in. Y'all. Say Danny. Josh, you been in. Danny snuck in. Danny snuck in. Danny snuck in. I love Danny. Uh, <laughs> he said, I love. I remember when Danny came. I still remember oh, yeah. y'all being late for McKinley's party. That was when y'all first met yeah. Danny. Yeah. Danny was like, I am here. Yeah. Danny was ready. like, y'all, we're going to be friends. We get mm-hmm. ready. Tab and, Tab and Chad mm-hmm. and Toby. There, you know what? A lot of people. That is a lot. Chad, that, that ain't nobody. Cool. Here's seven additional people. I was like, that was a lot of people that you just named. Yeah, but been to the house. But the other thing I wonder if it's because they're also industry people. Yes. Um, Is that what you're saying makes it, you're not sure? I'm trying to give him an excuse because, child, he said it was nobody. And then he literally It was just Angel and Marcus and Dad. No, you know what? It would go off of you. How many new friends do you all have? Because Kev is almost like an industry person where people, he be saying people are friends. And he's just like. I don't. But like. Are y'all Danny is your friend. Yeah, but are we? Uh, are you saying outside of the people Kev just named? Out of uh, are all the people Kev named, would you be like yes? Da- I talk to Danny literally almost every day. Mm-hmm. Like that is like so. You would say she's like your first real friend out. Yeah, there. yeah, 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 yeah. She, I literally talk to Danny daily. Melissa and, and her sisters are like you and your sister though. Mm-hmm. Her and her sister are real friends. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are friend and Mel and them come over the house all the time. Mel, mm-hmm. so I see Mel. Also, yeah, I see them every... But that's, that's my sister. I know, but I'm saying oh. you don't have to look for other people because you'd be like, oh, my sister's just coming over. Yeah, so you ain't true. searching for somebody. Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. No, I, I, I wonder that especially for you all. I'm like, I know it has to be hard to know if people are genuinely wanting to be your friend or if they are just hoping that whatever you all esteem and prestige you all have sprinkles on them. Yeah, mm-hmm. sprinkle me. Sprinkle me, sprinkle man. Me. <laughs> well, guys, that is the end of our mukbang. I know Bye we're blacks. missing half of, a, well, a quarter of the We're missing half of the ball, though. Half of the ball. A quarter of the whole the team. All the beautifuls here. Oh, okay. It's just... Don't do the math. Don't stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to do TBNT. Again, 33% of the people who watch my stuff are not subscribed to me confused really mm, that's a true st- that's a true so analytic. I told you, people stop subscribing on youtube it's not as big I of a thing YouTube. i watch tiny desk weekly i am not subscribed to npr well that's they're different i am oh, a person and i want to see the number correct <laughs> with recommended and that's also it. that's the problem you watch three dog on videos youtube's like you'll see everything and people don't remember that they're not with all of that yeah. said hit subscribe but yeah. all that being said do what you gotta do jojo don't subscribe to nobody i said how do you find people the recommended <laughs> he scoffed at me <laughs> the recommended uh, well 
Well, until next time, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, Bye Black. Yo, she's comedy.